Onshape's Sheet Metal now includes form features. A library of standard form tools is included, configured to let you specify the exact size you need to match your available tooling. Modify the parameters if necessary, then specify a location, either a sketch vertex or make connector. Form tools can of course be patterned, but a single sketch with multiple vertices is usually easier. The orientation of the form is based on the sketch plane or the z-axis of the make connector and can be flipped, rotated or offset if required. Common form features for ventilation such as louvers and mounting bosses are included. With just a few clicks, complex form geometry can be added to your sheet metal models with ease. The form tool geometry can be simple or complex and it can pierce the sheet thickness or not. In the example of this knockout or half shear, the material is not completely punched through. Looking at the section view, you can see the results. On the flat pattern, the form features are shown as sketches. The benefit here is that you don't have to finish the sheet metal part in order to add the forms and the output of the flat pattern on the drawing and any DXF output shows the form tool profile and punch center. You can also create your own form tools. This example is creating a vent pattern that may be company specific, so the form tool does not have to deform the material. It can also be used as a punch. To define your own tool library, you need a folder and at least one document. Each element or tab within a document represents a single form tool with a part that adds material and a part that removes material. The only other requirement is that you have a configuration variable called thickness, then use that variable to drive sketches and geometry. This enables a standard tool to be used with different material thicknesses. The updated tag feature that is used for frame profiles has been extended to include forms. Simply select a part to add, a part to remove, and a sketch that will appear on the flat pattern. The origin of the part studio will be used by default, but you can also select a make connector to define the origin and orientation if needed. Version the document so it can be linked, then go back to the library folder and right click. Go to Set Library and choose My Sheet Metal Forms or if you are the company admin, you can share it with the entire company. Now, when you are editing a sheet metal part, the forms will be available for use without having to manually navigate to a document. When exporting to DXF, two new options are available. Include form feature outlines and include form feature center marks. Form features add more detail to your sheet metal designs and make them easier to document and manufacture. Chamfers are most often used to break edges and should always be added using the chamfer feature. However, if the size of the chamfer is critical to the design, it may need to be added to a sketch. A new chamfer tool in Sketch works just like the fillet tool. Select two entities or a vertex where two entities meet and a chamfer is created with two dimensions. The manipulator modifies the size of both dimensions equally, and each dimension can be modified individually. If the chamfer needs to be driven by an angle, simply delete and add dimensions accordingly to quickly and easily add functional chamfers to your designs. Lines, circles, rectangles, and a new sketch point are now fully parametric in drawings. For example, drawing a rectangle and drawing lines across the corners adds coincident constraints, so as the rectangle is resized, the lines update as expected. A subset of sketch constraints can also be added between sketch entities and view geometry. To keep this rectangular keepout area in line with the edge of the cavity, a vertical constraint can be added between the vertices of the sketch and the view geometry. Dimensions are added in the usual way, with the option to change the value which in turn updates the sketch. These can be added between the sketch and the view or just the sketch entities 
with the sketch solver understanding when the sketch is overdefined and setting the dimension to driven. When the drawing is updated, the sketch references are also updated to maintain design intent. The constraints can be easily modified by right clicking, then going to show hide and show constraints. Highlight the constraint to delete and right click or press the delete key. If the geometry is sketched over a view, it is associated with the view. If not, it's associated with the drawing sheet. Sketching in drawings removes the need to create a sketch in the part and show it on a view and makes drawing title blocks simple. Assembly drawings with lots of parts and lots of callouts can get very busy very quickly with more time needed to move callouts and other annotations to make room and to ensure that the drawing is legible and unambiguous. Parts that are related or in close proximity to each other can be called out as a group. Onshape now stacks callouts when placing one on top of another. This makes the drawing easier to read. Existing callouts can also be stacked by simply dragging and dropping them onto other callouts or stacked callouts, and an entire stack can even be added to another. A message indicates that one or more callouts were removed to avoid duplicates. Notice that item 13, the washer, is still called out twice because it appears twice in the fastener stack. It can be left like this or changed by right clicking the stack and selecting Edit Stacked Callouts. Items can then be removed by clicking them on the screen or by clicking the X next to their name in the list. This list can also be reordered to adjust the stack. Individual callouts in a stack can still be edited to change the style or add a quantity, in this case overriding the quantity in the entire assembly to indicate the quantity in each stack of fasteners. Stacked callouts can also be created by right-clicking a callout and selecting Add Stacked Callouts. These can be selected on screen or, if they are difficult or too small to select, by clicking Add Instances from BOM in the dialog. Items such as glue or grease that have part references in the assembly are called out in a stack by default. To adjust the appearance of stacked callouts, the Drawing Properties panel has additional options to change the stack direction to up, down, left, right or automatic and to change the gap between them. And of course, individual stacks can be modified from the Styles panel. Stacked callouts in Onshape makes drawings simple to create and easy to read. In a simple drawing like this, a section view is usually enough to fully detail the design. However, a section view can only be created from another view, but this view can be moved off the sheet so it won't be visible when printing the drawing or creating a PDF. You can also use this off-sheet technique to add things like process-specific notes added to the drawing template so you don't need to type them out each time or copy and paste from another source. When exporting to PDF or printing, only the views and notes within the drawing border are shown. This behavior is also now available when exporting in DWG, DXF and DWT formats by enabling the option to exclude off-sheet content. This option is remembered for every file exported in any of these file formats, providing more flexibility when creating drawings that need to be opened, viewed or edited in a 2D CAD system. We are excited to announce CAM is available in Onshape. With this update, we are releasing Onshape's CAM Studio, a completely integrated, cloud-native, professional-grade CAM system. CAM Studio is included for all Onshape professional and enterprise subscribers and includes two and a half and basic three axis milling. And available soon for purchase, CAM Studio Advanced, which includes advanced three, four, and five axis simultaneous milling. To get started with CAM Studio, click the plus menu and choose the option to create a new CAM Studio. This launches a new CAM Studio tab. To begin creating toolpath, start by selecting the component you want to machine. Here you can define whether this is a part to machine, work holding, or stock definition. 
Once the components are defined, it's time to create a job and define the body to machine. From here, we will work our way from left to right, defining the machine, setup, tool, and toolpath. OnShape's CAM Studio has a large and growing library of machines to choose from. Simply select your machine from the drop down. New machines, once added, will instantly be available to everyone. Defining your setup gives you an opportunity to not only define the location of your work offset, but also the orientation. Then, create a tool by either choosing one from the list or defining your own. The last step is to create the toolpath. OnShape's CAM Studio has a large collection of selection types and machining strategies. For our example, we will do a rough pass with the entire body. Once your toolpath is created, it's time to simulate. OnShape's CAM Studio has a robust set of simulation tools available to all users. Backplot shows a simple animation of the toolpath relative to a finished part. Verify shows a more realistic animation that includes stock removal. And finally, machine simulation is the most detailed simulation, showing machine and fixture, and is great for detecting collisions. When you are ready to machine your part, simply post process, and OnShape's CAM Studio will generate the G code to send to the machine. CAM Studio is in beta and will include two and a half to five axis milling, but in the future, expect to see support for turning, mill turn, water jet, laser cutters, and more. OnShape's CAM Studio architecture is unique and powerful, offering advantages that scale to handle the most complex machining available. All while being fully integrated into OnShape's world-class data management and collaboration tools. We hope you are as excited as we are. Thanks for watching. Click the logo to subscribe or see some of our other videos linked here.